How to replace a thermostat on a Lincoln MKZ and Zephyr. This may also work with Ford Fusion. I already got it basically halfway done. What you need to do is take your intake out. All you need is a flathead screwdriver. It'd be like a little round uh, band. You want to loosen that little flathead screwdriver up. A screw. You want to wiggle that off of the throttle body. Then you'll have a connector. Looks like that. That's plugged in your mass sensor on the bottom of it. You just want to pull that little red tab out and push the little black tab inwards while pulling out. After you've done that, you may need to use a little bit of a force. You got these little two ball pin holders. And you want to kind of yank on it, try to get it free from there. If you've done that, go and sit to the side. You want to take your battery off. You'll need an 8 millimeter deep well. Going to take both of the terminals off of it. Take the battery out, lay it out to the side. You'll need to move your battery tray. You'll need a 10 millimeter deep well. You got the two nuts that'll be here, and you'll have a bolt that'll be here. You want to go ahead and do that. Take the battery tray out. You'll also have it clipped in by these plugs on it, basically the terminals, wires. Then after you've done that, your thermostat, I've already got mine halfway taken apart, but you'll need an 8 millimeter, I'd say a shallow socket. Make sure you, you try to, if you don't hold this back, you'll just lose all your radiator fluid. That's in your reservoir, it's at the full line, and you can kind of see where I'm at now, down here. So I kind of lost maybe about half of it or so. So you want to kind of set it upwards so it's not all draining out. Now I'd recommend having a catch pan. I have one underneath my car. So once you got that all set up, go ahead and remove your two 8 millimeter bolts. One here. You'll have one one on the other side here. And that's how you can access your little thermostat right under here. And after you've done that, my car was a little bit hot. Not like scolding hot, but it's been sitting for a couple hours. Now what I just want to do, I've got a rag so I don't burn myself and just kind of wiggle the thermostat out just like so. Now if you've done that, I would recommend, I did not do that, but I would recommend replacing your O-ring on it. But mine looks like it's alright on it. So I got my new part here. If you want to know the part number of it, 14138. That'd be, I believe, the part number here. And these basically cost seven to eight dollars, depending what kind you get. Mine's just a standard one. I believe that 80, 180 Fahrenheit. Basically, that's what your new one will look like. Basically, how you took that one out, it would just fit right back in. So I'll see you when I get back. So once you got your new thermostat in, basically just push it in, and it just kind of holds in place just like so. I don't know if I showed a good picture of what it looked like. I know it's on my old one. If the camera will stop shaking. I know it's on my old one. I got this black stuff. I'm not for sure if that's supposed to be there. But my new one doesn't have that. So maybe that's why I'm having that problem. So we'll find out if that fixes my problem. I noticed the problem I'm having. I thought it was a th uh, water pump. But I don't think that's... It. I had a code saying about my thermostat acting up and I noticed when I'm driving if I have high RPM driving fast pedal to the metal I say I notice I'm leaking on this side I'd see some drips on this side I looked and it's dry around the water pump so I'm not for sure so I'm just gonna start off with the cheapest way eight dollars that's not bad so I'll try that out so after you got your thermostat back in place, vice versa, you want to bring this downwards. And you see how all the fluid's coming out. Try to not lose all of it and try to get it in there as best you can, balanced if you can. Then go and put your two bolts back in. 